Hey Drew, welcome to Rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, I'll give you a tour. Awesome. Rickshaw is a small company. It's me, two people in the office, and then the folks you'll meet in the factory. Uh, and this is, this is just the main office area. It's basically a couple of desks. I got a little office on the side, and uh, we've got a graphic designer. We've got um, uh, someone who helps out with social media and shipping. There's a job description, shipping and social media. And then myself, and so, and I'm doing general management stuff, uh, managing the factory, managing all the uh, aspects of the company, and then I'm also in the factory uh, printing fabric and cutting specialty fabrics every day. So it's very much a hands-on business and a small business. All right, so we'll head on out to production. Everything is made to order here at Rickshaw, so every morning we download orders from the web, and uh, I give them to my production supervisor, Shaw Lee here. Shaw Lee, uh, Shali sorts through the orders, and um, if there are orders that can be made uh, with fabric we've got ready to go, then she'll give those to the sewers and they'll cut and sew the fabric. If it's something that needs to be printed, and we do a lot of printed designs, probably some here, we've got a Goulet order right here. Um, so, and people are familiar with all the prints we do, Van Gogh, um, uh, ink, or art, uh, fountain pen art, things like that. Um, if it's printed, I have to print it. So we'll see printing a little later. And then that printed fabric will come back around and go into production. But everything is made to order. And uh, the big idea, if there's a big idea here at Rickshaw, is the unit of one. We can make one of anything once we've made it. And the key to that is digital technology. So we have a digital printing tech, uh, 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 equipment set up, and then we have laser cutting. And laser files and print files are all digital, so if we get a uh, order for product ABC, we pull up the laser file for ABC and the print file for ABC and we print out the fabric, put it on the laser cutter and cut and sew it. Uh, we've just come from the San Francisco Pen Show where we introduced our new product in collaboration with Notco, the uh, new Sinclair Model R. These are some of the orders that came in over the weekend while we were at the show and so these are, uh, this is the fabric being cut here. We've got the, the plush. Uh, the foam, the cordura, and the pack cloth. So there's multiple materials here that have to be laser cut separately. So we cut the we cut the plush separate from the foam, separate from the outside fabric, which in this case is cordura, separate from the inside fabric, which is the plush and the um, and the 420 pack cloth. So you know there's a lot going on, and all of that is cut here on this machine. Michelle here is doing fabric cutting today, and. Um, We'll get a peek inside here and look at, uh, it's kind of fun to watch the laser do its thing. Um, you'll see kind of a little flame or spark. Um, basically, we're, we're melting uh, the cut line. The interesting thing about laser cutting that is that the, the laser is basically cutting, you know, cutting with a, with a hot beam, and so you're actually sealing the edge of the fabric. It makes for a better uh, sewn connect, you know, sewing those pieces together, the, the, um, the fabric isn't going to come unthreaded and pull out of the seam. Um, and it also is a level of precision that is kind of unusual in this kind of cut and sew where m many things are hand cut. Um, once we have the, the design in the computer, we basically make the same thing again and again uh, with very pretty tight tolerances. Um, you know, we're not doing injection molding, but we're also we're operating at a level of precision which is um, very repeatable. And when you're making things that are custom fit to, com to laptop computers, to knives, to pens, you want to have repeatability in that sizing because we spend a lot of time sizing things custom for different sized uh, tools and pens and uh, everyday uh, carry gadgets. Uh, we're sewing some pouches here. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, when you get to this phase, uh, that's not computers anymore, it's, uh, it's hand, handcraft, and sewing is a skill. And so uh, we pride ourselves in the skill that we have on our sewing line, for sure. Right here we're um, sewing some of the uh, Sinclair cases, and um, you can see it's like a puzzle, and there's a lot of pieces. Uh, there's a lot that goes into making these, and uh, the sewing time is probably cumulatively you know, um, once you if you total up all the independent steps, it's probably 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, but there's a lot of different little steps that go into putting the pieces together. 
So all of our pockets are lined. You rarely will see, rarely if ever see the back side of any of these fabrics in our, in our product, whether it's an interior pocket or an exterior pocket, a zipper pocket. We're always um, putting a layer of fabric um, that is facing the, um, the active surface, whether it's the inside of the pocket or the outside of the bag. And so um, typically we're putting a few extra steps <clears throat> into manufacturing our products. What you see here is uh, on the top here is all of our plush fabrics. This is the, the uh, magical plush fabric that makes it so soft inside of our pen sleeves and uh, pen cases. Uh, we have a group of custom woven fabrics that we've had made for us over the years. This is our performance tweed. Uh, it's woven for us in a factory down in, in North Carolina and uh, it's uh, herringbone and houndstooth a fabric that we designed and have made for us. We've got classic Cordura fabric here. This is the uh, classic 1000D Cordura nylon used in for the last 50 to 70 years for making backpacks. Uh, we use a lot of Cordura. Uh, we have our sailcloth over here and then a bunch of sailcloth uh, in another stocking location. Uh, we use a lot of sailcloth. And then our the pack cloth that's used to line the line the pockets and the inside of many of our bags is here. So uh, this is called 420 uh, pack cloth. It's a nylon or polyester cloth. So we also print our own fabric. And what you see here, this is a heat press. Um, the process for uh, printing fabric is we print on paper. The paper goes face down on white fabric and the image is transferred from the paper to the fabric um, at a high temperature. This is the printer that we use to print on the paper to make the designs for the fabric. It's a just a big inkjet printer, so uh, like the one on your desk, but a lot bigger. And the ink uh, comes in these uh, in, in these big uh, uh, plastic encased sacks here. These are filled with ink, and uh, there's two per channel. We have black, yellow, blue, and magenta. Those all can be combined to create any color. And so just like your inkjet printer where you have to replace the cartridges, we have to replace these big um, buckets of ink. And so, uh, but that's basically what this is. It's a digital printing system. So what we do is we, every morning when we get all our orders, we, pulled, we pull all the files from our Dropbox um, uh, with, into a art board. And then we print that art board onto paper and then we print that uh, or we transfer that image onto the fabric and then it goes off to uh, cutting and sewing. Uh, what we're doing here is uh, rather than printing roll to roll, I'm going to uh, print some smaller pieces of fabric on sailcloth. This is for a gear pouch with our cupcake camo pattern, which uh, people were excited to see at the pen show. So I'm printing out, uh, printing on paper. These squares I'm going to hand cut uh, down into small pieces and then we'll go over to the heat press and I'll show you how I print the sailcloth. Okay, so what you see here is the paper has the ink on it, okay? And right now it looks very pastel. We can't tell what this is going to print like just by looking at this. Um, this printer could be used to print, you know, photographic posters if you wanted to, but we're printing on a special paper that basically if you think about it is blotter paper. Its sole purpose is to carry the ink to the heat press and then to transfer the ink onto the fabric. So I'm going to cut these out so that I can use them on the small press. Now this, this is heated up to 390 degrees. I don't want to touch that because it'll burn my hand. Um, so we're going to we're going to preheat this for 20 seconds. I have found that that will shrink the fabric down to and, and it'll be stable from then on. It's not going to shrink any appreciably anymore when I'm transferring the image. It actually takes about a minute to transfer the image under heat, but just about 20 seconds for, um, for it to pre-shrink. So now I've got a piece of fabric that's pre-shrunk. I'm going to use my tongs here, it's hot. Put my print side up. So I'm going to stick the paper down on the fabric. Now we're going to let this go for a minute and um, or 50 seconds. And the process here is that the heat is causing the ink on the paper 
to change from its liquid state, which it is on the paper, uh, to a gas. And uh, that's called dye sublimation. It's just the process of heating it up to the point where it turns, changes its state from a liquid to a vapor or gas. Um, when it vaporizes, it's attracted to the, um, to the polymer, the, the, uh, the, th the, the polyester or nylon um, molecules. And so this happens to be a polyester facing. Those polyester molecules are, and the ink are attracted to each other and they actually bond chemically. Unlike screen printing, which is a mechanical bond, this is a screen printed shirt. Uh, the ink is grabbing onto the cotton. Here, the ink is, um, is chemically bonded to the fabric. And so now what we have is our image. The, the fabric is hot, it's 400 degrees. It's like uh, you don't want to eat the cookie when it first comes out of the oven. Um, so I can burn my fingers handling the fabric all day long. But this will cool off pretty quickly. And so now we have a piece of fabric that's printed with that pattern. We'll take this to the laser cutter and cut it out and then ultimately it will turn into something like this. So that is exactly where that fabric came from to make this pouch.